listening towards cinematic audio has been. Because we are so used to hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary again? Engines are up and burning. Welcome, guys, to the Dolby Atmos Surround Sound Survival Guide. I'm going to actually be putting together a few different videos that are labeled the Dolby Atmos Surround Sound Survival Guide in order to give you the best choices or literature that I can in terms of putting together the best Dolby Atmos surround sound system you possibly can. Let's get started with number one. In order to have Dolby Atmos, you need, well, Dolby Atmos. And what I mean by that is you need an encoded piece of source material with a native form of Dolby Atmos on it. And most likely that's going to be in the form of a Blu-ray or a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray with Dolby Atmos on it. Now, besides using a Blu-ray or 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, you can also do streaming titles and choose to use that all over the internet. However, I will tell you that most streaming titles are not going to be in native Dolby Atmos. I have seen a few services offering it, such as Voodoo, and you're able to get a native form of Atmos technically from the internet. However, most streaming sources are going to offer you Dolby Digital Plus, which is technically going to be upmixed then into Atmos using the surround sound and height information. So, Realistically, in order to get a native form of Dolby Atmos, you're gonna need a Blu-ray or 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray of which it has a Dolby Atmos encoded soundtrack. Number two, in order to get Dolby Atmos, you're gonna need Dolby Atmos compatible or compliant equipment. Now, what that means is a either a receiver or AV surround sound processor of which is capable of decoding Dolby Atmos. DTSX is also the competition's form of object-based surround sound, the latter of which I prefer. So, putting together a list of equipment of Dolby Atmos um, products is going to be a little bit difficult, however there are several out there, but you will require an AV processor or AV receiver capable of decoding the Dolby Atmos soundtrack. So along with the AV receiver or surround sound processor, you're gonna need the speakers. Now, Dolby Atmos is a form of object-based surround sound utilizing height channels. And what those are are speakers on the ceiling or on the upper portion of the wall directly radiating down towards the listening position in order to give you an enveloping feel or universal sound bubble of which you can hear all around you. So technically one can utilize Dolby Atmos with just a simple 5.1 setup, however you aren't utilizing the full effect of it using height speakers or height channels. And of course with that, last but not least, is a piece of equipment that is capable of playing the Blu-ray or 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and decoding the Dolby Atmos being a Blu-ray player. Now, one thing to add about that is most DVD or Blu-ray players that can even play Dolby True HD are capable of outputting a Dolby Atmos encoded soundtrack system. Meaning that if you've got an old Blu-ray player, let's say from eight to 10 years ago, that can produce a Dolby True HD or DTS HD Master Audio lossless encoded soundtrack, yes, you will be able to play Dolby Atmos from that. So you don't need to necessarily run out and buy a brand new Blu-ray player. Well, however, you will need one that can decode Dolby True HD at the very least. So along with speakers, an AV receiver, a Blu-ray player that can play Dolby Atmos, you're pretty much set. As long as you've got everything connected, that's all you're going to need for the very basic pieces of equipment. Now along with that, what's the next step? How do you take this further and how do you get the most enjoyment or performance out of a Dolby Atmos surround sound system that you possibly can? Well, the simple answer is an external power amplifier. Most AV receivers on the market are going to have nine channels. Some of them have 11, especially on the flagship or 
super end higher expensive models can have 11 channels of amplification on board but even in that situation I always highly highly recommend having external power amplification having external power amplifiers gives you the better performance dynamics and headroom needed to actually hear those height speakers with more punch with more accuracy and really more decibels guys now if you'd like to know more about external external amplification please refer back to my older videos on setting up a Dolby Atmos surround sound system or I can walk you through in later videos on how to set up the external amplifiers, how to choose them, and, well, which ones to buy. So last but not least, what is the most important thing in any Dolby Atmos system? And that is simply the speakers and the amplifiers of which are driving them. If you've got a Blu-ray with Dolby Atmos encoded soundtrack, you've got an AV receiver, you've got your display set up, and you've got your speakers running, if you feel like you're missing something, usually buying a better or larger set of speakers isn't necessarily going to mean better sound. You want to set things up in a way that is best for the listening position. Now, if you've got multiple of those, that can be difficult to do. However, the room is the simplest and easiest way at directing the sound towards the listening position in the best manner. So having a closed off room is usually going to work the best. If we look at, for instance, this room, it's got a wide opening here that leads into the rest of the house. That's usually not ideal. So we want some sort of a squared room with four walls, a basement, a study, some sort of a bedroom type of a situation, but we at least want a back wall to us. And we don't necessarily want our seating position so close like this to the wall. We want to have some opportunity for those back channels or surround speakers to give us some room or some area at least where the sound can radiate towards the center position. So moving further on, you've got all your equipment, you've got all your speakers set up, wired, you think you're getting the best sound capable, what's next? Well, and that answer isn't always easy. Once you've got all your equipment ported in the right direction, wired up and connected, really it's calibrating the system. Once you've calibrated an AV receiver or processor, it usually is going to produce a night and day sound difference. It'll be calibrated towards those room acoustics, you'll have certain delays and timing issues corrected, and you'll also usually have the best sound quality available offered by your equipment. So, in this series of Dolby Atmos Surround Sound Survival Guide videos, I'm going to be going through a comprehensive list of not only the products I recommend, but how to use them as well as how to connect them. So, we're going to run through things like what are the best sound modes, what are the best ways to upmix Dolby Atmos, what are the best ways to utilize even height speakers if you're not watching a Dolby Atmos compatible or encoded soundtrack. But even more importantly, guys, we'll go over some of the best pieces of equipment that I have found to work best with any Dolby Atmos surround sound system. In fact, I'll even go over the best Dolby Atmos surround sound movies that I've found. And walk you through in the easiest way possible, or as I can, to achieve the best sounding Dolby Atmos surround sound you can possibly get. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. If you'd like to know more, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment under the uh, description in the comment section. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be having a ton of videos soon to come. I'll also be posting my review of the SVS Prime bookshelf speakers. And we'll also be comparing those at some point to the SVS Ultra bookshelf speakers and so on and so forth. I've got several different products I've got to review. I've got several different videos, almost totaling in about 15 things I've got to edit and post and get on out there because I have been busy lately and I've been going in a new direction, guys. I've even got new speaker wire to try out, more speakers to install, 